Hello and welcome to another video about Asana. Today we're talking about a new feature, which is the ID field. So this is a new field type. It's a, basically a way of getting a unique ID for each task. Now, you might be saying to me, well, John, there is already a unique ID for each task. And in a way, you're right, of course. Every single task that you click on, if you click on this task here, we can see that the URL that loads up here relates to this specific task. We can also click here and copy the task link. This one will add an F to this. So if we, re if we dump that and reload, and what F does at the end, slash F, it makes it full screen. So if we want to see a full screen task, we just add a slash F to it, or we can take that off and see it in a normal um, way of displaying it. Anyway, that's not what you came here for. You came here to talk about ID. So let's do that. I'm going to jump into the list view because it's just easier for me. Um, and then I'm going to click on the plus. You can see here we've got this ID task type. No, ID field type. That's the one. Um, and what we can then do is give it a field title. The field title that we give it will provide the task. So if, for example, we call it ID, the, um, the, the task ID will then be ID slash one, ID slash two, so on and so forth. If, for example, we want to, uh, this ID to be for engineering, we can prefix it with ENG. Now, this is a bit weird, I think, because, um, let me show you. Let's say we're going to call this ENG. Oh, by the way, um, it automatically adds it to your library so you can access it and pick it up in other projects. That's what this field uh, does, if anyone isn't aware. You can use it to reference um, other, uh, reference the field in other areas. So let's just create this and we're going to get this ENG ID. Now, I'm not sure whether the unique ID should have been a unique field that could only be used in one place. In some ways, that kind of makes sense to me because what we can actually now do is create another ID, which we can um, call, I don't know, marketing, for example. Now, to me, I feel as though having a unique ID, it makes sense for it to be truly unique, i.e. it's the same for everyone across the organization. But I didn't develop this, um, and uh, I'm sure people that cr uh, develop this are far cleverer than me. And I'm sure at some point I'll make a future video explaining why this is actually a good idea, but I'm just not quite sure at the moment. So now um, when we're talking to people, rather than have to read out the long ID for a task, we can just say ENG9, which is also MKTG9 um, for the same task. So it looks as though the, the, the number that is given is given um, to both IDs. So the actual core ID, the number, remains the same regardless of the ID, which is good. It would be really confusing if the ENG ID was different um, from the MKTG ID. But anyway, that's a quick introduction. I hope that made sense. I hope I haven't confused anybody. Um, if, for example, and uh, I'm sure you know this, but if you want to then reference uh, that ID or see that ID in another place, you can click on the plus, um, you can uh, choose from library, and you can add those IDs into other areas. So if we go here, we'll see that uh, MKDG 16, 17, 18, 19, and presumably if we add ENG in here, um, they're going to have exactly the same IDs as well. Uh, when I say IDs, I mean the numbers. Yeah, so it's exactly the same. I hope that's useful. Uh, quick introduction. Uh, I was exploring it myself at the same time. Um, I hope that's been useful to somebody. Take care. Catch you soon. Bye-bye.